ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وامامنا وقائدنا ونبينا ورسولنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحقة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وبعد فإن أفضل الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في دين الله بدعة وكل بدعة في دين الله ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم اجرنا من النار تقبل الله منا ومنكم الصيام والقيام والعمل الصالح في رمضان ونفعنا الله واياكم بالقران وجعلنا من اهل القران نسال الله سبحانه وتعالى ان يجعل القران العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء احزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا وان يذكرنا منه ما نسينا وان يعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وان يرزقنا تلاوته اناء الليل واطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يضيه اللهم امين my brothers, my sisters, my fellow community members, seniors, shuyukh, I begin by the greeting of Islam, the peace and the blessings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I continue by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And reminding myself and you that the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger, a prophet and a servant of Allah. Acknowledging that whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions, sinful desires, and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah to allow us the clarity, to be able to see truth as truth, and to be able to hold on to it, and connect with it, and stand for it, and not be dissociated from it. And I ask Allah to grant us the ability to see falsehood as falsehood, and to dissociate from it, and to not be implicated in it, and to not be associated with those associated with it, Ya Rab, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Ramadan has come, and soon we are going to be, inshaAllah, if Allah grants us life, we're going to be celebrating Eid in just 15 days. And when we're celebrating Eid, we are all going to implement the sunnah of wearing something new. Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to wear something new. Because it indicates a new beginning. Ramadan has come and it has changed us. It has made us better on the inside. So we reflect that change by wearing something new on the outside. And how do we celebrate? You complete the fasting period and then you will engage in takbir of Allah. You will say Allahu Akbar on the day of Eid. How do we celebrate? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alhamd. We celebrate by saying Allah is greater. Allah is greater than my inferiorities. Allah is greater than my insecurities. Allah is greater than my commitments, job, my physical commitments. Allah is greater than my family. Allah is greater than my relationships. Allah is greater than my social conventions and expectations. Allah is greater than any social construction. That is what we're saying on that day. But how many of us are actually going to be saying it from within before they say it on the tongue? How many of us are actually going to be experiencing it from within? And how many of us are going to get the energy to be able to move and to hustle and to engage in sa'i for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Ramadan? Listen to this carefully. When Allah talks about dunya and hustling for dunya, what does Allah say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا فَانْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ Allah is the one who made the earth hospitable. And He gave you many opportunities within it. So walk, walk, take your time. 
in the way that you pursue this world, وَكُلُوا and eat from what Allah has given you. So when you're pursuing dunya, you should be what? Take your time. Don't rush. Don't hustle. Take what you need. Take your time. Walk. Because it's important, but it's not the most important. That's not where you put all of your energy. You see people when they're driving in the morning, maybe not in Calgary, but in Toronto, at least in bigger cities, New York, you'll see people four in the morning, five in the morning, on the highways, one hour and a half, two hours and a half, on the highway, to get to work, to hustle for eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, to bring home a check, repeat, 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 stuck in this cycle. Stuck in the cycle of need, wanting to meet needs, wanting to fulfill themselves financially, wanting to consume from dunya. But Allah tells us in our pursuit of dunya, we should what? Yes, take what you need, live a good life, comfortable life. But when, you, when it comes to managing your energy, a lot more of your energy should be given to the akhirah. Look what Allah uses, the words He uses when He talks about the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ Rush, compete. Compete towards the forgiveness of Allah and a jannah that is as wide as you cannot imagine beyond your imagination. أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Prepared for the people of taqwa as we mentioned in the Qatar last night. When Allah talks about akhirah, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ You used to rush and compete together. يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ Not to make more money, to do more, to give back more, to leave more khair. وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا Through all of it, they would call unto Allah, make dua, supplicate, Ya Allah, keep us grounded. Out of fear that Allah can take it away at any moment. And out of hope that Allah can give. This is not a call to be poor and to be impoverished. لا والله. The companions were the richest of people. The companions were the richest of people. Seven of the ten guaranteed Jannah were extremely wealthy. Abu Bakr was a businessman. Uthman was a businessman. Umar was a businessman. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf and the rest were businessmen who had a lot of money. Actually, if you take into account Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, if you take Abdul Rahman ibn Auf's net worth and take inflation into account, his net worth would roughly be in today's time around 50 to 70 billion US dollars. That's his net worth. But they went and pursued dunya not for the sake of dunya, they went and pursued dunya for the sake of Allah. To make people's lives better. To give back more, to build more. So they kept dunya in their hands, not in their hearts. And they understood that wealth is a great slave, but a terrible master. Wealth is a great slave if you remain in control. If you use it for good. But the minute it begins to control you, the minute it begins to define you, you start saying, I'm better than this, I'm better than that, I'm... You begin to define yourself by your wealth, not by what you do for the sake of Allah with your wealth. That's when wealth and the dunya begins to what? Begins to control you, to manipulate you. You become a slave to the money. And a great example of this, subhanAllah, the higher you go in, in wealth, the more you need to spend to keep up. Now everybody in my circle is driving $500,000 cars. I can't be different. I need to drive $500,000 cars. Everybody has three or four mansions. I need to have three or four mansions. Everybody has a yacht. I need to have a yacht. I don't care for a yacht, but I need to get a yacht. Because that's what people of this caliber apparently have. I don't want to be there alone. I don't want to be left out. So wealth begins to impose itself on you. And what comes with wealth begins to force you to behave in a certain way. The companions didn't do that. Umar al Khattab, when he entered Jerusalem, what did he do? Did he walk in with all of these gold, his gold and jewels? He walked in, and we know the narration, he walked in with the most humble of clothing. And he said, We are not people 
Let's seek izzah by what we have in our hands. Now Allah. We have izzah through Islam. That is where we get our confidence. That is where we get our worth. That is where we get our value. And everything else we use for good. For good. And we know the, 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 the speech, subhanAllah, the, the Arabs, they said, رَأَيْتُ النَّاسَ قَدْ مَالُوا إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ مَالُوا وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ مَالٌ فَعَمْهُ النَّاسِ قَدْ مَالُوا رَأَيْتُ النَّاسَ قَدْ ذَهَبُوا إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا فَعَمْهُ النَّاسِ قَدْ ذَهَبُوا رَأَيْتُ النَّاسَ مُنْفَضَّهُ إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ فِضَّهُ وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ فِضَّهُ فَعَمْهُ النَّاسِ مُنْفَضَّهُ I see people inclining towards people with wealth and the people with no wealth, people run away from. I see people rushing to people with gold and the people with no gold, people run away from. I see people going, flocking towards the people with silver and the people with no silver, nobody wants to be around. So the companions understood that you need to control dunya, to do good, to encourage good, to do good. But it doesn't control you. And they took moments like this in Ramadan to ground themselves through the Qur'an. They would read the ayat, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرْوَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى The human being begins to transgress when they think of themselves as what? I don't need anybody. How many times have we seen people with no money coming and volunteering and trying and being so nice and building connections and social ties and the minute Allah opens up the world for them and they get a lot of wealth, you don't see them anymore in the masjid. My hour is now worth a thousand dollars. My hour is worth two thousand dollars. My hour is worth a hundred, two hundred dollars. I should not be here. This is the way. This is beneath me. And that's why, and Nabi Sallallahu said in his hadith, "Wallahi, I don't fear poverty for you. Then fuck aksha alaykum. I don't fear poverty for you. But I fear that dunya would open itself up to you." That the dunya would throw itself on you and it would consume you like it consumed the people before you and it would destroy you like it destroyed the people before you. The human being transgresses and he says, When he begins, she begins to see herself as self sufficient. I don't need anybody. I have enough. I've become self sustaining. But in reality, who's the only? Self-sustaining being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayu al-nasu, antum al-fuqara'u ila Allahi, wallahu al-ghani al-hamid. It doesn't matter how rich you get, you will always be impoverished when you compare yourself to the immense power, the immense wealth, the immense capacity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this dunya is not even worth the wing of a fly in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to the hadith. And Allah can give. There's no limit to what Allah can give. So, what's the call to action? What's the call to action after this introduction? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran to be from those who what? Who give up what they love the most in this dunya to be able to clear the path to love most Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through that love, they're able to be given more and more and more khair in this dunya to use. Look at the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not attain jannah, piety, righteousness, until you spend out of what you love. You give, you distribute, you share from what you love. Now, what do we love the most? Allah tells us in the Quran, The human being loves wealth, has a strong affinity towards wealth. We love wealth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to give, to redistribute from what Allah has given. Allah gives you all of this abundance. Your wealth you attain through the blessings of Allah. 
You use your eyes, you use your intellect, you use your mind, to you use your body to collect your wealth. Allah gave that to you. So atuhum, share mimalillahi from the wealth of Allah alladhi atakum, that He gave you. He's trusted you, you're a custodian of it. You're a custodian of that wealth. And a part of that wealth belongs to the people around you. When you are alone, Allah gives you enough risk just for you. When you get married, Allah gives you enough risk for you and your wife. When you have kids, Allah gives you enough risk for you, your wife, and your children. Allah mentions in the Quran, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ We provide for them, and we provide for you. We provide for you, and we provide for them. Allah shares it in both formats. To remember, it's not just your wealth that will grow. Allah will even send wealth specifically for them. That will benefit you as well. So you will benefit from bringing and taking more on. Same thing. When you say to Allah, Ya Allah, I am not just going to take care of myself and my family, but I am making a commitment to spend whatever amounts of my wealth to my community. Every week, every day, every month, every year, beyond my zakah, I will dedicate 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 100,000, relative to what you're capable of, to my community. A portion of it to the faqir, a portion of it to the miskeen, a portion of it to expensive expansion projects in the masjid, to Quran projects, to sponsoring orphans, to helping young people, whatever it may be, to some, you know, commissioning, printing of the masahif, translations of the Quran that can be used for da'wah. When you now have dedicated and allocated a section of your wealth for khair that benefits the community, guess what happens to you now? If it's sincere, Allah begins to bless you now. Because you're giving, people depend on you. So Allah gives you, not just for you, gives you for the sake of others, if it's sincere. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu says, مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ your wealth will never diminish by giving, by sharing, by giving sadaqah. And sadaqah is called sadaqah because it's a confirmation of your truth. You say you believe. Min al-sidq, iman You say, I believe in Allah, Ya Rabb, and amant. Sure you do. Do you really believe? Let it be seen through your giving, through your charity, through your sharing. Allah mentions Surah Al-Layl. To highlight this, Allah mentions, أَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى The one who أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى gives and protects what they gave by remembering and reminding themselves to remain humble. You know some of us we give and we say, okay, I've given, now I can, I have, I have, I've given, خلاص, now I can waste a little bit of time, I can enjoy, I can indulge a little bit. But no, you've given, you've distributed that wealth, you've shared from what Allah has given you, and now it's an investment with Allah that you don't want to lose. So, I don't want to lose that barakah, that blessing, so you continue to do more. You do more to protect it. You engage in istighfar, you engage in salah, you engage in dua, because you want to protect it. أعطى والتقى وصدق بالحسنى When they give, when they share, they believe in the good in themselves. They believe in the good in others. They believe in the good, the ultimate good, which is the good waiting for them in Jannah. That's what motivates them. Sometimes people say, oh, don't give this masjid, don't give these people, they're gonna misuse that money. But Allah says, وصدق بالحسنى They believe in good. They believe in the good in people. I trust my brothers. I trust my sisters. I trust my community to do good with this. And I trust that Allah will use my halal wealth for good and it will reach good. The one who does this, Allah will make it easy for them to get to a path of ease. Allah will make it easy for them to get to ultimate ease, Jannah. You find yourself getting up from Fajr lighter, enjoying the Quran more, being happier, 
You know, one of the secret keepers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, Hudayfa bin Yaman, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was in Uhud, in, in Handaq, and he said, I need somebody to get up. Everybody was cold, everybody was tired, everybody was not sleeping, no sleep for days. They were digging, tired, exhausted. I need somebody to crawl across the tent, to go to the other side, to give me some news about what to ha what's going on, so we can plan, prepare. Nobody wanted to get up. Prophet Muhammad said, whoever gets up, I guarantee them my companionship in Jannah. Nobody wanted to get up. Because it was such a difficult situation. Then the Prophet Muhammad saw potential in Hudayfa, pointed to him, Hudayfa, you do it. We gotta act quickly, gotta be decisive. I choose you. And I'm making dua for you. Go ahead. Hudayfa says, Wallahi, when I got up, right before I got up, there was fatigue in my bones. There was no warmth in my body, absolutely cold. I had no energy, I was exhausted. You know, you're running on fumes. As soon as I got up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I felt energy, warmth, comfort, decisiveness, barakah, clarity. And subhanAllah, because of the brevity of time, I cannot tell you exactly what went on. But go read how he made such amazing contributions because of that. And the idea here is, when you decide to be, you know, focus on yourself and your family only, and, the, and, and there's importance in that, but you just become khalas, I don't care about the community, let, let it be somebody else's problem. Not my problem. You will have just enough energy in life for you and for what you have going on. The more you take on, the more you take on these shoulders. You take the community's needs on your shoulders, you carry the community, this is my family. These are my people. These are my neighbors. Their children are my children. Their women are my sisters. I care for them. What concerns them concerns me. What worries them worries me. What can I do to help? You have the attitude, Wallahi, you will find that Allah will uplift you. Will give you strength and warmth and confidence and purpose and barakah in everything that you do. May Allah make us among those who do that, Ya Rabb May Allah make us among those who lift the community on their shoulders and care for the community and invest in the community. Not for any ambition or selfish motivation or a goal or a desire that is personal, but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah finishes Surah Al-Layl with the ayat of Ahud. Ayat about the most amazing of companions, Abu Bakr. وَمَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجِزَى إِلَّا بِتِغَاءَ وَجِهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى Who was this man? He used to give from his wealth to set the slaves free. So his father came to him and told him, Hey, why are you setting weak slaves free? They're weak, they're not going to help you. If you're going to spend from your money, might as well set the strong slaves free. So one day they can return the favor. Abu Bakr didn't say anything. He just kept silent because his father out of respect. He simply smiled. But the Quran came to explain his state. The Quran came to speak on his behalf. He didn't have to speak. Allah spoke on his behalf. He's not doing this to get a favor back from anybody. He's doing this simply for the face, for the sake of Allah. He's presenting it for Allah, hoping for it to be accepted, waiting for a day to meet Allah face to face, to be recognized, to be appreciated. And He will be pleased. You know, Allah doesn't, you know, you know how amazing this is when Allah says, You will be pleased. He doesn't tell you how. You will be pleased. Imagine when a king tells you, You're gonna be, don't worry, you will get what you desire. This is a promise from the King of Kings. May Allah make us from those, Ya Rabbi, Abi, who give, who distribute from the khair, who take the concerns of the community on our shoulders, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us and allow us to have barakah in what He gives us, Ya Rabbi, Abi. Akhul Qul Ihaad wa Astaghfirullah Ali wa Musa al Muslimin, Tastaghfirullah Ali wa Musa al Muslimin. Alhamdulillah, wa wa salatu wa salamu ala min astafa. Allahumma adina fi man hadayt, wa'afina fi man afayt, wa tawadana fi man tawadayt, 
وبارك اللهم لنا فيما اعطيت وامنا واصرف عنا برحمتك الشر ما قضيت اللهم اهدنا واهدنا واجعلنا مهتدين اللهم بارك لنا وفينا وعلينا واجعلنا مباركين اللهم قبلنا وتقبل منا واجعلنا مقبولين اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قوة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا بارك لنا فيما رزقتنا وكفنا وابننا بحلالك عن حرامك وبفضلك عمن سواك اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار نصيرنا اللهم اهد شبابنا ونساءنا ورجالنا واغفر لوالدينا وارحمهم كما ربونا صغارا اللهم اغفر للمسلمين وللمسلمات وارحم المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم صرف وعدنا المصطفين المسلمين الموحدين في كل مكان اللهم كن معهم في غزة وكن معهم في فلسطين وكن معهم في القدس يا رب العالمين وفي بيت المقدس يا رب العالمين وفي مسجد الأقصى يا رب العالمين اللهم كن لهم عونا يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم على عدوهم وثبتهم على الصراط المستقيم اللهم لا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا يا رب العالمين واجعل آخر كلامنا في الدنيا لا إله إلا الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله واجعل اخر دعاءنا ان الحمد لله واقم الصلاه ان الصلاه كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مرفوتا. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والذي إذا سكن ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما Oh, 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 oh. 